I am Tandra. It has been three days since I got married. It was an arranged marriage, I am a decent cultural girl raised in a patriarchal society. My husband is a well-behaved man. We didn't get many opportunities to talk and get to know each other since our marriage. On our wedding night, Nadam came to the bed and sat by my side, then drank the milk that was kept for him. He told me to sleep. Then he slept too. He didn't he feel the necessity to ask me anything or talk with me. Maybe he was too tired to ask me how tired I was. I was tired too. Completing rituals and talking with my relatives in a heavy dress made me a lot of exhausted and I wanted to cry. My relatives noticed my gloomy tired face and told me it's normal to go through all these in marriages. I should be happy and well adjusted with all the customs as a girl. I balanced my mood and made efforts to look nice to abide by the rituals of society. But despite being tired, I was carrying a lot of excitement in my mind about the nuptial night. I always framed a special wedding first night in my imagination, where my husband will whisper all the romantic and intimate lines into my ears. And I will die out of blushing. But nothing special happened. At night when Nadam was sleeping, I was awake and felt a little bit torn down. For the first time in my life, I felt insulted and irritated without anyone saying or doing anything. I was working in the kitchen. Then my mother-in-law came and told me to make the morning food fast. She made me do all the work and behave like she is always under thousand atom pressure. My husband was getting late for his work. Meanwhile, my sister-in-law came and told her mom, why is she so decked up in the kitchen? There are so many other responsibilities in a household rather than grooming. This kind of person will just say anything they have in their mouth. I understood her tantrum, she doesn't like my style. They think I am always planning to entice and control their son secretly. I made roti bread and dal for the morning. My sister-in-law touched my roti and said, Why your roti looks like a zigzag road? My poor brother, is he going eat this before going to the office? My mother-in-law said, She is still into her low standard lifestyle in her house. She doesn't have any idea of our luxurious living. I silently put food on my plate for my husband and went to serve him. Nadam was looking annoyed and said, you are so late. Were you breaking stone? I told him I overslept yesterday. That's why I was late. He didn't say anything and left home for work. I stood at the door to say goodbye, but he blindly walked out as yesterday. He doesn't like this kind of gesture both connection and attention are involved. Nadam is a kind gentle person. He doesn't talk much and always talks in a soft voice. This kind of man isn't interested in other things except living in silence avoiding everything. They keep peace house by avoiding family conflict and think that they are doing great by playing a dead role. Their main role and pride are they are a provider in the family who meets the financial needs of a woman. In the afternoon, it was time for Nadam's arrival. My sister-in-law came and told me I didn't prepare enough for Nadam's arrival from the office. I should keep his meal and water ready before he comes. Then I should sit with him while eating and serve him if anything is needed. I'm sure he wouldn't have any need, still. I have to stand up beside him to play the role of a maid in the status of his wife. I too was tired after working all day in the house. But no one is serving me here. Neither Nadam nor his family. I felt like a lifeless working empty doll in his house. I often feel like this when I have no one to talk to. Nadam didn't call me the whole day from the office. I called him yesterday, he didn't say anything more than two words. It felt like I created some extra burden on him by calling. I didn't want to get bored by his behavior, so I cut the call by asking some questions. He didn't feel it necessary to ask about my condition and well-being. I have known a little bit about his mentality after marriage. He thinks by marrying me, he has got an invisible certificate of achievement, he can keep me in any way he wants. Whether I feel satisfied or not doesn't matter to him. He isn't even interested to know how I feel, or what I think. I'm sure he rarely knows if women can have feelings too. A man growing up in these types of cultures doesn't have much idea about how to communicate with a woman. They don't see a woman as a sensitive being that needs to nourish and love unconditionally and gently before revealing the unseen. They see women just as some women, who will stay in a house and live in whatever they get. If a woman is sick, they rarely know about the sensitive emotional state and desperate need in seeking of a pair of warming hand on their head. These men think women will get better on their own, if they need anything for their sickness, they will either arrange it by themselves or ask for it. The thing called stepping up for your wife without asking doesn't exist in their world. They are not the type of man whose whole world falls apart even though their partner utters only the word ouch. 
They think the women in their house will be okay no matter what. The first reason they are women, the second is they are living. They don't care if their partner needs some extra attention or pampering. They see it as something plain. Their partner on the other hand will die in pain in need of some attention, though their bold heads don't get a little bit affected by it. They would rather say their partner is too needy, desperate, or someone who lost their sanity. Then as usual what happens with every woman, their woman will be left devastated and take every word from them as an insult thrown on their existence and unmet needs. How strong creatures they are, can't take any tantrums about their untold needs. I am the kind of woman who always looks for excitement in a relationship. I expect my partner to continuously give me attention in various ways and make me feel better. Sometimes, he should make efforts to know my thrilling mind in intimate ways. Other times, he should always act like a caregiver for only me. In general and overall, I expect my husband to be curious about my nature and make efforts for our emotional closeness. Nadam doesn't match life. It doesn't seem like he has any emotions. Even though he may have some, he wouldn't do any indecent behavior by expressing them in front of others. After Nadam came from the office, he sat on the table without looking at me. I was standing beside him, while he was eating. He didn't ask me to sit and eat with him, I didn't expect him to not show me the general courtesy. Maybe he expects I have to serve him and don't expect any warming behavior in return. We, women are trained to be natural caregivers from our birth. Nadam stood up, gurgled in the basin nearby, and went to his room. I took the dirty plates to clean. Nowadays, cleaning things feels a lot better and more refreshing. It feels like I am cleaning dirt from my mind. What can I do more? I often feel insulted in this house for no reason. I was not like this before. No matter what happened, nothing ever affected me. But after marriage, I'm getting to hear what I want to hear. I am not being looked at how I wanted to be looked at. I feel a certain kind of thirst and desperation for some excited broad eyes and listening ears. I secretly search for some eyes that desperately look for me and ears that want to hear me out. I don't want a husband anymore. I want a person who will love me and give me what I need.